Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 6. It was game on this afternoon for many kids after school got out. With no ice or snow to worry about, some decided that soccer on the basketball court was the way to have some fun. Today's 50 degree plus temp set everybody's energy level up, and it might stay that way for days to come. Hutch mentioned earlier today that we were very close to a record high temp. Hutch, did we make it? Well, we tied a record high set way back, Mike, you may remember this, 1899. Well, maybe not, but 54 degrees, believe it or not. While it was stuck in the upper 30s for peak temperatures in Hallock and Cavalier, Devil's Lake enjoying 51 gorgeous degrees, as did Lakes Country. Heading into the evening, a few showers in the central and northeastern portion of North Dakota. These are drifting east and northeast this evening. And our forecast models indicate the best chance of showers will mainly be along and north of Highway 2. We will cool off this evening, and it... Uh, there will be a wind shift that will change our weather as we go into tomorrow. But the warmer than average weather looks to stick around for quite some time. Coming up here in a few moments, I'll tell you how long. And we'll talk about our next chances of showers of rain or snow. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Yes, sir. Make sure you have the Valley News Live Storm Team weather app so you can keep up with the weather anytime, anywhere. You'll get the latest forecasts and conditions so you can plan your day. Just search VNL Weather in the App Store and download it for free. Now it's in the 30s and 40s and, and maybe even 50 today, so, so the fluctuating temperature degrades the ice quite a bit as well. And with these higher temperatures, some community members worry about kids playing on unsafe ice. A West Fargo resident posted this picture on Nextdoor yesterday saying the children were standing close to open water. Valley News team's Rose Itzkovitz visits a nearby pond to check out the conditions and has more on what we all can do to keep our kids safe. Mom of three kids, Bridget Bitsagai, has a pond in her West Fargo backyard. I think it's fun to have um, ponds or creeks, you know, close by, but I think it's also important with kids to educate them about when it's frozen over or when it's dangerous. Which by this time of year, West Fargo Fire Chief Dan Fuller says is not usually as much of a concern. Usually by right before Christmas and between Thanksgiving and Christmas, things freeze up enough that there's no problem. But just because we the mild winter that we've had, it, it, it's, it's not a safe bet. On Sunday, a West Fargo resident posted a picture of kids playing on a not fully frozen Brooks Harbor pond. Chief Fuller says that pond in particular is less likely to completely freeze. It's right next to the pump house. There is the possibility that if we get a lot of snow and a lot of uh, storm water build up throughout the uh, winter, that Public Works will pump into this pond. The, the increased flow will degrade the ice in certain areas and make it unsafe. But here's how to check. If you have your kids out here, you want to come out here, um, what we recommend is going to the edge of the pond and drilling a hole. You need at least four inches on the edge. The West Fargo Fire Department advises to check for thickness every five to 10 feet. And they say on days like today, when you can already see the water coming up on the edges like this, to just stay off completely. If it's getting thicker as you go to the, towards the center, you know you're, you're pretty well set. And bottom line, always be with your kids. West Fargo mom Bridget Bitsagai agrees. As parents, we always tell them they can't go down by water without an adult. And then we also just think it's important, especially if you see open water, but even it can be deceiving with snow on top. So our rule of thumb is just always with an adult. In West Fargo, Rose Itzkovitz, Valley News Live. The West Fargo Fire Chief says so far this year, the police have responded to some calls of kids on potentially unsafe ice, but they haven't had any rescue calls yet. He also warns to always stay off the river where the constant flow will degrade the, the ice. The Beltrami County Sheriff's Office says the bodies of a male and a female have been recovered from Upper Red Lake in central Minnesota. Also, an ATV belonging to the two missing people has been recovered in that lake, just north of Bemidji. Officers pulled the bodies out just after 3 this afternoon. The names of the victims have not been released yet, but search teams were looking for a 28-year-old man from Stacy, Minnesota, and a 30-year-old woman from Princeton, Minnesota. Police had believed the two were in the water because officers found personal items Items near a hole in the ice. The bodies were taken to the Sanford Medical Center morgue for positive identification. Three NDSU football players have been dismissed from the team for violating team rules. Freshman quarterback Henry Van Dellen, senior safety Darren Kelly, and freshman wide receiver Sean Engel are no longer with the team. Head coach Chris Kleiman made the announcement today but would not give any more details as to what rules the players broke. 
All three were backups on the team and were not expected to play a major role in the Bison's FCS playoff game this weekend against San Diego. Now, backup wide receiver Dallas Freeman was suspended for this weekend's game, but will return to the team if the Bison move on in the playoffs. We're continuing to follow this story, so be sure to check valleynewslive.com for updates. Police in Grand Forks say it's the biggest drug bust in years, and it involves two UND students. The Grand Forks Narcotics Task Force had been investigating for some time a house where the students lived. Cops seized 60 pounds of weed as well as a semi-automatic rifle, 70 grand in cash, and numerous pills. The cost of the drugs is estimated at over $330,000. The two UND students from Minneapolis, 21-year-old Cade Hoban and 20-year-old Mark Hildall, were arrested. They were living in a neighborhood behind the Salvation Army, north of University Avenue. Charges have been forwarded to the Grand Forks County, or Grand Forks rather, state's attorney. A man is facing multiple charges after a following in a police chase in Becker County, Minnesota. It started Friday when an officer tried to make a stop on County Road 21. That's just south of the White Earth Reservation. The chase ended about six miles east of White Earth when the suspect took off and ran into the woods. A canine unit tracked down the driver who was more than six miles away. Cody Eaglefeather was arrested and a search of his vehicle turned up about five pounds of marijuana and drug paraphernalia. Eaglefeather is being held in the Becker County Jail and charges of fleeing and drug possession with intent to sell. Two people are facing charges after shots were fired and a South Fargo neighborhood was put on lockdown overnight. Police arrested 31-year-old Jessica Christensen of Fargo and 31-year-old James Parks of Barnesville. Christensen was arrested for obstruction of a government function, Parks for aggravated reckless endangerment and firearm possession by a felon. Police were called to the apartment building just east of University Drive on 35th Avenue South after gunshots were heard late last night. No one was hurt. Officers found multiple bullet holes at the scene. SWAT was called in to assist and nearby apartments were evacuated for a few hours. A Fargo businessman allegedly a part of a prostitution sting in June of last year will spend no more time in jail. A judge this morning sentencing Dan Dewar to 30 days with all but one day suspended. He was given credit for a day he already spent locked up. He must also complete a state program on the impact of sex trafficking and be on probation for a year. Dewar was one of 18 men arrested in Fargo-Moorhead during Operation Guardian Angel. That's a federal operation involving people trying to buy sex from juveniles. Later on Valley News Live at 6, we've seen the buildup here in the Valley where others in North Dakota are looking to make it big, brewing beer. Up next, an old scam is new again. Details on how the bad guys are after your money.